Hello, geography students. This is Mrs. Politsky, and I have your notes for Chapter 3, Climate, Environment, and Resources, Section 1, Weather and Climate. So as we go along, you're going to need your guided notes, and you can follow along and fill in the items that you need. So we're going to start with weather and climate. And we're going to talk a little bit about these maps here that are on the screen here. The average weather conditions of a region over a long period of time, it's called climate. And as you can see below, there are a couple world maps here. And each of these maps kind of has highlighted the different climate zones, uh, depending upon the models that were used to, uh, to formulate them. But what I think is interesting is, you know, if you look at, uh, certain latitudes. So if you're looking at uh, regions near the equator, what you're going to find is that these are areas that you're going to find either tropically wet or nearby, maybe tropically dry. So it is kind of interesting that you can see those kind of things as patterns. Um, number two, the areas of the earth that tend to have more seasonal changes are the areas that are midway between the poles and the equator. Hence, this is like Nebraska. Uh, you know, if you the other day we were talking about the four seasons. And if you are kind of halfway between the equator and let's say the North Pole, uh, you're going to have that great opportunity to experience all four seasons within the course of a year. Uh, unlike people that are living near the equator or up in the polar areas, uh, where it's either going to feel like winter most of the time or it's going to feel like uh, summer uh, for a good portion of the time. So you can take a look at the, the world climate map uh, here and you can kind of get that idea. Or if you wanted to take a look at the United States and our climate. Uh, in Nebraska, at least the eastern half of the state, uh, we are in a what we call a humid continental climate zone. Uh, this is great if you like all four seasons. You're gonna have extreme uh, cold in the wintertime uh, with snow on the ground. You're also going to have extreme heat in the summertime uh, with lots of hot and humid days. And in between, you might have this wonderful opportunity to experience spring and autumn. Taking a look at number three, the hottest areas on Earth are near the equator. And because these areas, for the most part, are receiving more direct solar energy, uh, the direction that prevailing winds blow in the middle latitudes is actually west or westerly. Uh, if you take a map or take a look at the map over here, uh, you can kind of see how that works. Uh, the United States, for the most part, would probably be within the middle latitudes, and a lot of our weather basically starts in the west and moves eastward. And the same could be said for people who are living kind of in the southern part of um, South America, kind of experience the same uh, flow of wind. Uh, so nevertheless, there are some areas that kind of have similarities or as, as far as temperature and weather is concerned. A large body of water can affect a region or the climate and helping to moderate the temperatures. Uh, one of the things that I think is interesting is when we start looking at uh, how storms develop. And I'm going to flip my screen here, show you a little bit with the, the ocean currents, because that also plays an impact in the kind of weather that you might see over certain regions. Um, right now, we're in the middle of hurricane season. And what's interesting is a lot of the hurricanes that eventually hit North America, primarily uh, in the Caribbean or in the Gulf of Mexico, actually begin in kind of this area where I'm kind of using my cursor here. Uh, you had some colder water currents that hit the warm currents. And for some reason, uh, there's a certain amount of convection of energy that kind of goes up into the atmosphere and brews those storms. Uh, in some cases, the storms will literally follow the current. So you might have a storm that kind of starts off, you know, the west coast of Africa, comes through the Caribbean and then may or may not actually make landfall in the United States. Maybe we'll eventually bounce back into the North Atlantic. And part of that is just because it's following the current. 
All right. And number six, the part of a mountain that is the coldest is actually located at the top. Uh, this is a map down below here on the impact on mountain vegetation zones. And depending upon what your altitude is or elevation uh, will probably depend on your temperature. You know, as you move higher up in elevation, you're going to actually drop in temperature. Uh, areas that are kind of, you know, within what we would call like a timber line uh, might experience, you know, some, you know, moderate temperatures, meaning that it could get cold or warm during the day. But as you head up the peak, uh, you're actually going to move into a more alpine uh, type of climate, eventually into a polar, depending upon the elevation of the mountain. So, in number seven, when warm, moist air blows against a mountainside, the air rises. And as a result, it cools as it rises. Clouds form, and eventually you're going to have precipitation that's going to fall as that happens. And so that might explain, you know, for some reason why we might see uh, a certain part of the mountain range uh, that might actually have kind of a moist tropical, uh, you know, kind of climate, maybe lots of forest kind of on one side. And as we go to the opposite side, it might become more of a step climate zone, very dry, very little rainfall. And number eight, if the prevailing winds in a region are from the west, all right, the side of the mountain that is least likely to receive the rain would probably be the east side. Uh, down below here is actually a kind of a model of what happens on the Pacific coast. Uh, if you were in states like um, Washington or even Oregon, you have your coastal ranges, which are um, mountain ranges that may not necessarily be more than a few thousand feet in height. Um, you start off near sea level. You might see that these are areas that receive a lot of rain. There's a lot of lush forest in this area. And then there is kind of a kind of a area that is more of a, a plain. And then eventually you have like the, the Cascade Range. Uh, on the west side of the Cascades, you're actually going to have a little more moisture. But as you cross that range, uh, places like eastern Oregon, eastern Washington actually have uh, a very dry climate as a result of being on the east side or the leeward side of the mountain. All right. Thank you very much.